It's a strange game, because statistically, you won the game, you had more yards, more time in possession, you turned it over less, you won everything except the scoreboard. Well, actually, uh, Jim, it's uh, kind of um, another uh, game in a schedule in which we have um, played poorly. And I think we're going to have to accept the fact that uh, this is a run-of-the-mill Michigan team. Um, we go into games like this that we ought to win. And uh, playing in a season in a league when the, it would, in my judgment, it would be the easiest to win the conference. And uh, when we go out in some of our games, we play like a second division ball club. So maybe we just got to accept the fact that we're just not very good. Where do you go? Or what do you do at this point? Because I know that you may say that now, but I don't think you're willing to live with that. Well, I didn't say I'm willing to live with it. I'm just telling you the facts. I mean, all you need to look at the three games that we've lost and, uh, and study film, and you can see pretty quickly why this team has not been successful. And uh, it's discouraging because you would think that we would be a better ball club than what we are. And you would think that we would have a chance to win the championship. But uh, right now, in my judgment, we're out of the race and uh, we're not playing very good football. And consequently, uh, we lost another game against the team that, in my judgment, we should beat. And you gave them one touchdown and here it is early. Well, this is a ridiculous play to start with. On a on a uh, simple protection situation and uh, man on our team just uh, blows an assignment completely and they block the kick and there's uh, one of their touchdowns. Indiana goes to the air to their great receiver Jones it's to a, get the touchdown. It's a second down situation and uh, mistake in the secondary allows them to come in there and catch the ball for a touchdown. Um, offensively we played fairly decent but not, uh, not great. Um, once again, I would say that at least uh, eight to ten plays, we had a communication problem, and we had one there where uh, we just couldn't get the uh, signals to the backs. Both backs went the wrong way. That was not the quarterback going the wrong way on that play. Um, here we hit the tight end over the middle uh, for a first down. Moved the ball fairly effectively the first half. Um, Use your fullback a lot. Yeah, we ran the fullback some and uh, did a pretty good job with that. The other thing, Jim, I think we've got to recognize is that we, you know, I uh, hear uh, Jamie breaks for a good game. You know, we've been talking all this time about how great our offensive line is. You know, people have said that for several years, that uh, we have all these fine offensive linemen. That's one of the weaknesses of our team, in my judgment, is that our offensive line has not played good football. Uh, we don't base block well, we don't uh, sustain blocks well, we don't hit hard. I mean, we're just a uh, very average offensive line. Touchdown pass to Colasar ties the game up at seven, and you're moving the ball fairly well. I think you got to feel confident. Well, sure, I feel confident we ought to win this game. Uh, if, if you really looked at the statistics at halftime, it was total domination. Uh, but then uh, to go out and play like we did in the second half is... Uh, uh, that's the reason that I don't think right now we have a very good football team. You come back, go to the air, and use your tight end a little more. Was Indiana giving you the tight end? No, not really. It's just uh, that's the way it turned out. Um, we hit him a couple times, but let's face it, Jim, it wasn't really a passing day. And um, we didn't throw the football a lot, and we didn't throw it very effectively. But um, I think we only completed six passes. You get down close enough, and Mike Dillette is able to... That's a powerful field goal there because you're kicking it into the teeth of the wind. And uh, that gave us a 10-7 to 7 lead. And then they come back and start to move the ball beginning of the second half, or beginning of the end of the first half, right? The end of the first half, they moved a little bit, but really, uh, Jim, they were not a threat uh, offensively in the first half. Uh, the reason they have seven points on the board is because uh, we uh, allowed them to block the kick. And uh, and that's how they got their uh, touchdown in the first half. Actually, it should have been a 10 to nothing first half lead. And really, on the base of the yardage we got, we should have gotten uh, another score. Even with all of that, uh, you still had to feel confident in the fact you were moving the football in the half at half. Of the half game. time was very positive, and uh, you know we felt very strongly we go out and play a strong second half or win the game. And then we just 
went out and Jim really laid an egg. I mean, we just played miserable second half football. And I think it was true both offensively and defensively. That's hard to say defensively when they only got 190 yards total offense. A team that had averaged over 400 only got a little bit against the Michigan defense, but it was too much. We'll be back and we'll take a look at the second half of Michigan, Indiana, right after we pause for these words. And we'll be back with Michigan Replay. Oh, it just seemed we didn't execute. No, we had some missed blocks. Things just didn't, uh, things just weren't clicking like they were in the first half. I don't know what to say right now. I'm, uh, I'm just uh, speechless right now. It's just something I can't believe we lost this game. to win the first half, but I think defensively we somehow had a little bit of a letdown in the second half. We should never let them get that uh, end of second touchdown. We had some crucial mistakes that uh, cost us dearly, but um, if we would have played the way we did first half, we wouldn't have lost this ball game. We could have won it defensively. And there isn't a person on this team I think that's going to give up. We're going to just uh, reestablish some goals and, and make, uh, make these goals fairly high, and we're going to reach those goals. Wolverines, in other words, are going to have to suck it up to get things going second half of the season, as Mark Mester said. But with a 10-7 lead at half. You had the football in great shape starting the third quarter. I thought that was key. Well, they had a 15-yard penalty. had to kick from the 20, and we started to drive at our own 48. I mean, we had great field position, and we went down, sputtered around, and ended up having to kick a uh, long field goal into the teeth of that wind, and he hit it good, but it was just uh, a little bit short. And uh, so they took over then and had a 16-play drive that ate up in eight minutes on the clock. And a key play, their first possession, this interference This call. is third and eight. This is a ridiculous call. Uh, he goes back to pass. See, the guy caught the ball right there. He caught it, see? Now, have you ever seen in your life interference called on a play like that? Never. That third and eight, uh, as bad as we played in the game, I honestly believe the officials were worse. They, uh, it, it was a terribly officiated game besides everything else. It so, just you know, wasn't I, a good day well, all the way around. That's a, that's a tough combination to beat. You got <laughs> you can't hear the torn down ring. You're you're not a you're not that good a team yourself, and you're you're just battling to win, and you get miserable officiating besides. And you add all that together, this is an interference call here, and uh, it gives them uh, the ball uh, deep near Terry. That was third down, 14. <laughs> it's just that the two plays that hurt you most are yeah. the interference calls. Right. There's a fourth and one, they go to a sneak. Uh, tough to stop that, though, on a fourth and one and a sneak situation. Well, if you fall forward, you're going to get, uh, you know, some guy. This is a miserably played option play. And, uh, so they go in and take the lead. Now, uh, it's unbelievable that we went 37 minutes without scoring on that defense. I, I, well, I give you some idea how poorly we block. And also the rain was coming down, and, and the draw play that Indiana ran was more successful in the second half against you than it was the first half. Well, I, I think, uh, as you know, Jim, we're not uh, we're not a strong team in the linebacker uh, area, and we're a below average secondary. And uh, although we got a pretty good defensive line, I think we get hurt because of that. And uh, our defense. You know, played well enough for us to win. I mean, we really can't criticize them that much. Yeah, here, here, they, here they got a fumble for us, and we get the ball back. Um, Jamie comes out on the draw play, and we have the ball at midfield. They had plenty of opportunity to do him to win it. And there's still plenty of time left, and this is in the fourth quarter where the wind was just whipping all over. Pretty hard to throw here, although that was a good catch by uh, Colasar. Came up a yard short, had to go for the first down, and... Uh, Demetrius keeps the ball in an option play and gets it. Um, but, you know, we had we had plenty of opportunity. If, if we were a better blocking line, you know, when we get into four-down territory, we could dominate and do a job. Now, here's how ridiculous that is. We can't even hit a screen pass effectively. And that screen pass was set up, believe me. Now, there were that well, screen pass would have gone some places. In I think so. I think it would have gone some places, right. Here's a tip ball on the third and 12 for Indiana. We get the ball back again on the interception by Willingham. And uh, this is our really our last time with the ball. We had the ball in four possessions uh, in the second half. Each team had the ball four times, and that's it, because there weren't a lot of passes, therefore not incomplete passes that stopped the clock. 
So here's our last dying breath, and we throw a pass out here that has little likelihood of getting a, a first down, which is uh, discouraging. The ball should go upfield uh, and take your chances when you decide you're going to gamble on fourth and ten. So the final was 14 and 10. Uh, your second loss in the Big Ten, for the most part, out of the Rose Bowl. We're out of it, there. yeah. I would say we're, de we're definitely out of it. This is going to be frustrating for you because I think on paper you feel, I feel, I think a lot of people feel. I feel on, on paper, Jim. This there, is a better team. There, no, there are no great teams in the Big Ten. I mean, I think uh, that's been pretty well documented. And to think that we're playing like a second division ball club irritates me. And that's the way we're playing. But we're getting no play out of our offensive line. And uh, our quarterbacking in the big games has not been good. And uh, our linebacking for you know, mostly because we lost all our linebackers with injuries, but our linebacking core is not good enough to really be a good defensive team, and our secondary, in my judgment, play, is playing below average. Uh, so you put all those things together, and here, here's, here's the crowning blow. One of our strengths has been our kicking game. We couldn't punt. We had a punt block. Our return game wasn't good. Um, our kicking game was miserable. Where do you go for answers since you've isolated the problems? Well, you, you know, the answers are that you, uh, you go out and practice on Monday and you try to get some things straightened out, but I, I, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I've not been in a situation <laughs> like this before, and, uh, and I'm not sure that this, uh, you know, this may be, we may be in more trouble here. We were in 84, and, um, and that is discouraging. That is discouraging indeed. Hopefully that assessment won't be true. Uh, don't go away. We've got more football coming your way, including a look at Michigan's little big man up front. That's next one. Michigan Replay continues. With where do you go? Uh, what do you do at this point? Because I know that you may say that now, but I don't think you're willing to live with that. Well, I didn't say I'm willing to live with it. I'm just telling you the facts. I mean, all you need to look at the three games that we've lost and, uh, and study film and you... It's a strange game because statistically, you won the game. You had more yards, more time in possession. You turned it over less. You won everything except the scoreboard. Well, actually, uh, Jim, it's uh, kind of... Um, Another uh, game, and I uh, can see pretty quickly why this team has not been successful. And uh, it's discouraging because you would think that we would be a better ball club than what we are. And you would think that we would have a chance to win the championship. But uh, right now, schedule in which we have um, played poorly. And I think we're going to have to accept the fact that uh, this is a run-of-the-mill Michigan team. Um, we go into games like this that we ought to win, and uh, playing in a season in a league when the, it would, in my judgment, it would be the easiest to win the conference. And uh, when we go out in some of our games, we play like a second division ball club. So maybe we just got to accept the fact that we're just not very good. Where do